Hello and welcome to another Talking Dogs podcast as we look back again on 2020. I'm joined by two men today that have enjoyed, well, plenty of success in 2020 and hoping for more again in the coming year. Michael Corr, the man who's responsible for the Minas. Of course, Mina Miracle was his undoubted star, but he had three or four in the kennel that were really performing at the very highest level. And we're also joined by a man called Kenny Glenn, who certainly made headlines uh, more so across the pond than on this side of the water, although he did have a success in this side of the water, but he went and captured the hearts of all at Nottingham, winning both the English Derby and the Derby Plate with his two stars, Dear Jet Sydney and Doolin Duke. Gentlemen, you're very welcome indeed today. Thanks for joining us. Um, obviously, in these strange times, some people couldn't join us. We, we've asked plenty. You two boys uh, took up the mantle. You were, you were more than willing to talk. And why not talk about some success? It's, it's great to be talking about it. Michael, of course, you had a great year with Mean a Miracle. Yeah, yeah, good year, Ian. Um, hopefully continued through to this year with a bit of luck. Yeah, she was a real star for you, of course, winning the Cesaro, which that was her big one. But she did run up a, a derby, lest we not forget. And of course, she went so close in the ledger as well. Uh, Kenny, you were a man that, um, I suppose, dreams came true for you, capturing an English derby. I know as a Scotsman, you'd like to win the Scottish derby. And who knows, that might still happen. But winning an English derby must have been pretty sweet. Oh, it was... I never, ever thought in my wildest dreams that I would ever uh, win the derby, but uh, oh, it, it was great. It was a great feeling, and uh, it doesn't get any better. Yeah, certainly not. Well, it did get better on the night because you won the, the derby plate as well. Uh, I think that's what they call the cherry on top. <laughs> Aye, the two <laughs> dogs, and well, Pat's, Pat's the man who can get them over the line. I need to about that. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, we'll start with yourself, Michael. We'll have a bit of a brief chat. We'll come back at the end and we'll we'll ask a couple of more awkward questions then. But uh, we'll start on the Mina Miracle journey. Um, she started racing in sort of mid-2019. She she always looked promising. She ran an unraced stake in Shelburne Park. The fact that you brought her to Shelburne Park for an unraced stake suggested you always thought she was pretty useful. Yeah, from the start, she, she was showing above average, you know, and... Um, she probably wasn't one that jumped out straight away. She just kept improving. Um, I took her to Shelbourne for her first trial and she only done 29.40, so I come up the road very deflated. Took her back a week later and she done 28.60. So that was what led me then to go to the Shelbourne on race. Um, come up against a real hot one. I think I actually come up against, in the first round, I beat Seamus Haggins, bitch. Uh, Droopy's Plum, maybe I think was her name. I'm not actually sure. I think that was it. But um, Droopy's I mean, Plum actually won the stake, I think. Yeah, yeah. I bit her in the first round. So uh, I bit her in the first round, and then I went off the boil for maybe six or seven races. And um, she went into a wee world of her own, and thankfully she came out of it and started to show her true ability after that. Yeah, you weren't afraid to race her in those um, those first few months, shall we say. She had a lovely bit of experience before lockdown. Um, she had seven or eight races prior to the lockdown in 2020. She came back. She won a, a race in 2840-odd in Shelburne Park. And then sort of the wheels started to fall off. She was badly balked in a race. She got knocked over in her next race. But then all of a sudden things started to click and she really started to find her feet. And the rest, as they say, is history. Yeah, she 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 got hold over. You can, a lot of people have different theories on what to do when something's pulled over. But the way I operate all of them is take them to a different track straight away. And she come and she run an absolute cracker in Dundalk a week later. Got her checked over twice, as a matter of fact, just to be doubly sure. Run her in Dundalk and she's on 28.50. I think we'll run a real hot race. Uh, and then from that, it was just back to Dublin. I think that was straight into the Derby, maybe after that 28.50 win. Yeah, and through the Derby, she was one that like, she wasn't making massive headlines or anything like it, but she was performing. You could just tell this was a bitch coming into form, and that's exactly what you want with one of the ladies. You know, you want to get them firing, getting in form, and when, when they're in that form, they just continue to pr produce. And, you know, as we said, the rest is history. Um, coming into the Derby final, of course, she was a massive, massive price. I remember speaking to you the week before the Derby, and you said, Ian, she'll outrun her price. I have no doubt about that. No, I think all through the derby, to me anyway, she 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 was always overpriced. Um, the semi final was the biggest shock. Like she was the twelve dogs that was in the semi final. I think she was fourth fastest qualifier for the semi finals, and she was sixty six to one. Just didn't ring through with me, you know. So 
I don't know if she, she don't understand justice and that, but I think the difference in whore and other bits is like, as you hit on, everybody wants to get the bitch to run into farm. But usually with bitches, that farm is for a short period. You're hoping for them to peak. But she peaked right too. You know, from really from the end of August to the start of December, she was running in her top form. Like after possibly her 16th or 17th consecutive week, she went out and shattered the clock in, in Mullingar in the Cesarewitz final. Out of top six, you know. She had everything against her as such, but... She, uh, she just kept improving. Yeah, especially. I especially probably, I'm going to bring you back. Rather, we're going to talk about the Cesar just now in a moment, but I have to bring you back to that Derby final. And uh, particularly from the third bend home, between the last two bends, what was it actually going through your mind? Your commentary. <laughs> <laughs> As I said to you before, yeah, you said, I'm sure you thought you had it. And, and uh, the only thing that sticks in my mind is your, your, your yes. There's an outstanding dog or in front of her, but even your commentary led everybody to believe there was only one winner. Um, it looked like it. It genuinely looked going into the third bend, the pace that she was going at. But again, you're probably one of the only ones that I tend to my summing up of the final. It wasn't so much. Everybody says to me, if she had a stayed in, she'd have won the Derby final. And I said, no, if he had a stayed in, she'd have won the Derby final. Correct. She, he, he, had already, he, he made up her mind for her. He had already, she had already went. He went after her. And then she went again. And it was the second movement that beat her. She went all off balance with her second movement out again. If he had stayed in, I think. But then that's taken away from him. Because at the end of the day, I also heard someone, I'm not sure who it was, said it was a mark of the dog when he felt something else coming, he kicked again. Which probably is too, to the, in the fact like he had as hard a campaign through the the Derby is whore. Everything's tired in the Derby final. Yeah. So it just depends who gets the, the wee touch of luck. In those, in those minutes after the race, you must have said to yourself, you know, that was it. That was our chance. That was our chance to win a really big one. Of course, you weren't finished with uh, with being a miracle. She decided, you decided to take her down to Mullingar. Um, it was an inspired decision because she really did. Like she, she, it was clear to all she'd stay the 600 yards, no question about that. But she really did take to Mullingar um, pretty quickly, which can't be said for a lot of dogs. And she peaked in the final again. Yeah, I, again, um, I didn't give her a week off. There was two weeks between it, but she was in Mullingar the Saturday before for a, for a look around it. Um, done what I would, I can't actually mind, but I know it was an exceptional run again, but again, she was three lengths slower than, than the Maestro dog who's, who's since passed away, but um, went to Mullingar feeling very confident. But again, with Hora as my second string, um, the other dog was always faster, but just never had the look that she had. And I think with what happened to him in the end was probably, um, what was holding him up in his race and there was just a wee weakness in him and that was it. Yeah. Of course, she had three finalists. You had Mina Maverick, another very, very talented greyhound. He gave you some sport through the year, be it over 525, 550, 600, 750. Um, but to have three in a classic final, a very proud time for yourself, I'm sure. Yeah, it was. It was. It was nice. I, I think that the best aspect of it was the fact that she won. You know, she had run her up in the derby and... Because of the way she run, like she was always nearly playing second fiddle to something, and it, it, it leaves that thing hanging over you. Whereas is she running good and good company as such? But for her to come out and frank her ability with the display in the final was nice and on the cake, really. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was a stunning run, track record breaking run, of course. So not only have you won a classic, you've broken a track record, always a special thing. It's not the first track record you broke this year, of course. You had a pup yeah. that did uh, the track record in his debut as uh, Drumbo Park, Dunham Knoll. Um, he's likely raced since, but he showed plenty of ability in his last start in November. He, he, he's, he's been a difficult dog. Um, apart from anything else, he's a sprinter, which is going to leave everything very difficult. Getting them on, and this whole pandemic thing for... To get dogs racing, especially the sprint dogs, which there's not that many opportunities for them. It has been hard. He's had a few wee niggles, but he's a good dog. He's a very, very fast dog. And I just wish I had been on the chat with Mickey Rooney because I'd have to tell him, uh, running to see you, I'll have to run in Dundalk. <laughs> 
<laughs> you, you boys up there, you love to win your sprints. Um, we're getting back to Mina Miracle. She wasn't finished with. Uh, one or two eyebrows raised when she went into the ledger. I have to say, I, I thought to myself, God, maybe she's just going to go over the top. And I actually sort of nearly wrote her off in the semi final in my chat. And, you know, Tommy Lyon said, he said, no, I wouldn't rule her out now. This, this bitch, you know, she just keeps finding in the nights that matters. And in the end, she ran her best race at Limerick in the final. She did, but I still thought her a wee bit flat, to be honest. Um, but then, you see, you're looking again, your dog, Cash Reddy. Was, <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 he was in front of her going down the back straight. And you think because, again, he was running above himself that she should pass him. But he's come out and proved it. He's not easy passed him. Um, maybe she wasn't flat, but just to me, it looked on the night she was just a wee bit flat. Um, but since that, like again, probably my biggest regret in the years, I didn't run her the following week in, in Shelbourne and the Champions Night, as they call it. Um, because there's plenty of time to rest them. You know, you, it is a very short window that greyhounds get racing. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't be greedy, Mike, will you know? Uh, you, you, did you not win enough with her? Or go close no, enough. I, and don't I, I, it's not the winning. You see, it really isn't. Like winning, winning it's, it's all about them big nights and there's very few of them, you know. And, um, but she'll be back next year. Yeah. She's there in one piece. And... We'll, sa- we'll save you with that thought. We'll be back to you in a few minutes' time because we're going to speak to him. And your success in 2020 with Dear Jet Sydney, as we said, and Doolan Duke. And he has two greyhounds ready to go to war with again in 2021. Kenny, as we said earlier on, to win an English Derby, a lifetime's achievement, and then to back it up with the Derby plays in the same night. And to have those two dogs, and now a matter of a few months later, due to the, the strange calendar, you know, we're talking six months later, they have a chance to to go and perhaps defend his clown, Dear Jet Sydney, but he's going to have to be his uh, his kennel companion, Doolan Duke, who by all accounts is the one dog that the English seem to be fancying more than Dear Jet Sydney, which is strange enough. I was asked the other day, will Toaster, uh, will that switch you know, happen to favour some of the Irish dogs. Well, I said, well, it suits a fast starting inside runner. And by all accounts, I can't think of any other dog that really fits the bill better than Dear Jet Sydney. Um, he did provide you, though, with the very, very special moment um, earlier this year. It was only a couple of months ago at this stage. Is it still sinking in? Oh, without a doubt. Uh, oh, he's a great dog. I mean, I, to be fair, I was lucky to get him. Uh, He's a dog in a lifetime. Eh? They, they, they dogs didn't come along very often. How did you come across him, um, um, Kenny? Where, where, did, where did the deal come about? It was part. It was part. Of it. I had actually. I was buying a. I, I was just about buying another dog. And Pat said, "He's not the dog for you. He's not the dog for you. Dear Jet Seven is the dog for me." And I don't know if you know Craig. Craig Dawson. It yeah. works with Pat. Mm-hmm. Craig. They two were sort of. Craig thought the other dog was a better dog. Pat thought Dear Jet Sydney was the, the dog to buy. And I just says, look, I'm no arguing. I'll not buy any. I'll not buy, I'm not buying any of them. <laughs> and, then, and then Pat phoned my son to tell him to get my son to speak to me. He said, look, tell him, get your dad to buy Dear, Dear Jet Sydney. And Pat, Stephen came on the phone, phoned Pat back because he's just going by him. And that was it. Pat, Pat got on for me. Yeah, it, it was um it was it was a fair it was a fair spot because he looked a nice dog at Trilly, have no question about that, but looked a dog that badly wanted the fence and perhaps oh. not the strongest of runners, but he was just a greyhound. Like the mean miracle, as you heard Michael saying, he just got better and better through the year. Well, see, that's what Pat Craig kept saying that he didn't think Dear Jet said they would stay. And Pat said they will stay. Craig says it, look, Pat, I don't think that dog will stay. But Pat was right. He did. He, 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 he stayed good enough to win the derby. <laughs> He actually proved it on more than one occasion through the derby that he didn't just have to set the pace. Like this was a dog that ran a big race in both the semi-finals and quarter-finals in defeat. Um, his record through the English Derby was two wins, two seconds, and then on the night that counted, he made his fastest start a four ninety-one. Um, we over here were very much concerned by his draw in the was it the semi-finals or the quarter-finals where he was drawn outside of the uh, the other Irish dog Wolf and and we were fearing for the worst but in the end the two dogs ran great he was a dog that got smarter with that bit of racing he wasn't quite as dependent wasn't diving in quite as much through the English Derby as he did perhaps in the earlier rounds um, mm-hmm. a great sign in a dog 
No, I think I think he was starting to to learn. To, if you if, if you like, he was he was going middle and then cutting in. But when I first got him, all I wanted to do was go to the rail, right out and go to the rail. And even in the Irish derby, he didn't get the best of draws. He, he was always getting three and four in the Irish derby. Uh, I mean, the first round of the Irish derby was in trap four, and he he, he bullied that, that night, and and he won easy. We were actually there that night, and. Uh, oh, he's, uh, he's a great dog, but he, he seems to be tracking better now. Yeah, and he's a stronger running greyhound, as you said. Like he's just getting, he, he's just a dog. Whereas if it hadn't been for the English Derby, you'd say he's a real dog for next year. He's a dog that's just seemed to be reaching his peak towards the end of the year and better to come, perhaps. Yes, I agree with you. But uh, no, he's. Oh, I, de- I didn't really care what to say about him. He's. Uh, he's a great dog. Uh, he's a great dog. In normal circumstances, the likes of a dear Jet Sydney would be by quite some margin your fastest greyhound. But if you look at the English Derby market for next year, Doolan Duke is right up there. He's an exceptionally fast greyhound himself. I suppose you can't be greedy. But if you look back at his English Derby campaign and his Derby Plate campaign, there is a touch of what if about it. Um, his run in the opening round, it was basically the Atlantic Ocean he was running in. He paddled his way through it. It was raised at 90 slow. They could have raised it at 150 slow at that stage. And it was a stunning run. He won from here to Harold's Cross. Um, it was quite emphatic. Maybe it took a, a, an effect on him for the second round, but he did get trouble. He just didn't quite get involved that night. Went out. But thereafter, he just got better and better again through the, the Derby plate. Is there a case of what if with him? I think he's got to be a real dog for next year. I really do. He's, uh, he's an exceptional dog. I mean, but when he gets in front of the I don't think there's a dog that will come and beat him. Yeah, he, gets... he's a bit like his brother new in session. When he's on the bunny, he's just he's just sensational. When he gets through the bend in front, Kim, for the, for the first bend to the second bend, if he's in front, it, it seems to just go three, four, five lengths clear and they just didn't catch him. Yeah, how did you get your hands on him? Um, did you get in touch as he was an unraced? Did you get hear whispers? Did someone ring you? What happened? No, that, somebody rung me. He, um, I think it was. Uh, oh, I can't mind the fellow's name. who owned them. Austin Whelan. Oh, Austin, yeah. Austin Whelan owned them, and I, th- I think Austin was thinking about getting out the dogs, and he was going at the horses or something. I, I think, and he just, I can't mind who actually owned Craig and Series for sale. I just, I just, yeah, he looked a real star in the unraced stick at Clan Mill. Ah, uh, he's a, he's a real, honestly, he's, he's a, the, the only thing that I think about him is I felt a wee bit sorry for, um, for the trainer that you had him, uh, Graham Holland. Okay, and I think maybe he should have got the first chance on Ken and being a Yeah, Graham's not doing too bad for himself, if you know that. <laughs> he's after winning the last two Irish Greyhound derbies. He's had some of the best Greyhounds uh, in history in his care. He's uh, not doing too bad. <laughs> no, he, he's got uh, no, he's got the good dog, he's got good dogs as well, but uh, no, Dolan Jukes He's a he's a real he's a real dog guy. A real yeah, dog. he certainly is. You've got two greyhounds to really look forward to in 2021. I assume all targets will be the English Derby, but is there a, is there a chance we might see uh, one or two of them in, in Shawfield? Well, see, to be fair, I don't think Shawfield will go ahead. That's my honest opinion. I don't think Shawfield will go ahead, but I hope it does. I hope it does. I would love to win the Scottish Derby, um, but I can't see it. I can't see it honestly. Briefly, Kenny, tell us about your history in greyhound racing. Where, where, when did it start? Where did it start? And obviously, it started in Scotland. So uh, you don't need to tell us that much. Uh, it started. I was just in flapping. I just, uh, I, it was mostly flapping. I done. Done all the tracks around about. There's no tracks here now. There's, I think there's only one track in Scotland now. Um, but so it was flapping. Then I, I went into a syndicate. Uh, but I, I didn't like the syndicate because there's too many. You one wants to do this, one wants to do that. So I just decided to to go it myself, and I just bought. I had um, I won. I bought Farlow Nutter. Do you remember the Farlow Nutter? Yeah, I remember Farlow Nutter. Yeah. 
Owen Farrell and Ar, he won the, the Puppy Derby at Monmoor. And then he won the All England Cup at Newcastle. I won Ballamac Best at one time. In fact, I think I still own Ballamac Best. But that's another. <laughs> uh, he's doing really well. He's doing really well at stud. Uh, well, I've owned some really nice dogs over the years. Uh, but I miss the flapping. I miss flapping. Yeah, I've, I I must say I never I never got to go flapping in my days, but from what I hear, I missed an experience. Uh, you still have one or two dogs in the UK as well. Do you own Gonzo? I, I own Gonzo. Yeah, I own Gonzo with, with Julie. Julie Bateson's got Gonzo. Um, she's got about five dogs for me. Uh, I just bought a new one there. Um, funny enough, he's called uh, Toast 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 of Sydney. I think he's called. Yeah. I've just I've just acquired him. He's he's never run for me yet, but hoping hoping the best for him. Uh, I've got about, I've got about four or five with Julie. Uh, I had a I've got two with Pat. I had a bitch with Pat. Um, Glengar Mary. Yeah, she reached the final of the staying event at Kilkenny, the TP Weedick. Yeah. Uh, she she's had a real bad injury. She'll not run again. She'll not race again. Um, but no, I've had some. I've had some real nice dogs over the years. Yeah, it's, and it sounds like you have some nice, really nice dogs. Apart from the two, the big two that we've been speaking about, of course, Gonzo is one of the the fastest greyhounds in in the UK. Um, maybe Toaster not quite as track well, but we'll, we'll see. He'll be given an opportunity, I'm sure. He will be given an opportunity. I mean, I don't know about if it suits wide runners, and he can, he's a wide runner and. Uh, but we'll be going to Twister and Julie will be giving them every chance yeah well listen it was great talking to Kenny we're not gone just yet we'll have a couple more awkward questions to ask you we're going to start now with, with Michael Michael obviously Mean a Miracle is, is coming back soon um, what's the plan you, you may be looking at an Oaks campaign this year of course you never had a real chance last year with her but uh, this year we're talking what Easter Cup Oaks that's sort of an idea I don't think I'll go to the Oaks. I don't think she has the the early set. But you, you take a look, you take a look at what was in the Oaks this year and the, the speed merchants. You know, I, I just the fact yes, she would be up against bitches would maybe level it out a bit. But no, I, my my plan would be something similar now to next year. I'll go. I'll um, the calendar's a bit cramped. The only thing um, I would like to go back to Mullingar, Yar, uh, but I'd also like to take in the Derby. <laughs> It's, it's, it's going to be hard. I'll just take it as it comes. I'll start with Easter Cup and we'll, we'll go from there. We'll see what comes up in between, what form she's in. And to go to the Easter Cup nearly on ready, if you know what I mean. Not, not fully cooked and let her bring herself to it. If she gets through a round or two, fair and good. If not... Well, if she gets through a round or two, we know um, she'll be there, thereabouts come the final night. <laughs> Uh, that, 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 that'll be the general idea. So she'll lie on her bed to the start of February. That's just the way she's And you're gonna take on uh, you're gonna take on Mickey Rooney around Dundalk. I'll have to go and see Mickey. Uh, <laughs> take him on in more ways than one. Mickey's the bookie in Dundalk too. Um, uh, a good uh, you, you still have Mina Maverick, of course. Um will he have a campaign? Uh, M- M- Mina Maverick has went to pastures new. Oh, okay. Um, Mina Maverick probably, as you'd have seen the last night he run on Shelbourne. He's one of them dogs. He's Maverick by name and Maverick by nature. So yeah. um, there's, there's plenty of Mavericks in this game. He's going to the spring run in the Springbok probably in, in I think it's Central Park, the Springbok. Uh, so he's away for a spot of hoarder. So. Okay, lovely, lovely, lovely. So he's off to the UK. We, we might see him as a future Grand National winner or a Springbok winner uh, or something along the lines of those. The lad that has him had him before. He actually come back to me at the start of last year because of the lockdown. Um, I had sent him to, we had been a wee bit forewarned with him, so we sent him to uh, Ricky Holloway. And um, he sung his praises very highly, but then the calendar was a mess. So I said, look, send him back and I'll take a few. The 750 was always in my mind for him. And it went well. He won one, finished second on the, the Derby final night. So no, we got good fun out of him. And then I think he has just went a wee bit steam again. So... Now, and asked him, did he want him back? So, I have to ask you about any, any other youngsters, any dogs we have to keep an eye out for in the, in the coming year. Oh, hopefully, you're always hopeful. I, I, um, I 
purchased a, a young bitch, an honest bitch. Uh, so she's a newbie Sydney bitch. So I'll be starting her off. Uh, the sprinting dog, I, I definitely got a very high hopes for him. He's, he's a very, very pacey dog. Um, and a few more pups coming along, which you're really only hoping for, you know. I have a half sister of Mina Miracles. Um, she run her first race in the Moe, very messy race. But again, I think she'd be above average. So it's fingers crossed, really. You know? Fingers crossed. Well, that's all you can do in this sport. You, you, keep, you keep going, you, you feed them well, you look after them and hope that they produce in the track. And, and that's the key to it. By all accounts, you're doing well as we speak. So uh, just keep it up and hopefully we'll have more success in the future with you, Michael. Hopefully, hopefully. I'm, I'm actually, um, I'm taking now um, a couple of years out of work. So I'm going full, I'm going to give this crack all my attention <laughs> for the next couple of years. There's people screaming at the screen going, yeah. madman, you're a madman. Well, but you can, only, you can only do what you want to do, you know, and if it works out, it works out, if it doesn't, it doesn't. Oh, well, fair play, Michael. We wish you the very best of luck. Kenny, you obviously have the two dogs that we've spoken of. You've got a couple of unraced dogs, as you spoke of. Um, Burgess Dalo, did I did I see that you bought him out of y'all? Yeah, I did, I. I have got him. You were keeping that quiet. I was keeping <laughs> Uh, you didn't miss much, did you? That's my job, my, That's my job, Kenny. <laughs> uh, uh, he's he's never, so he's not again due to all the the pandemic and things like that. He's no race yet, but I think he could be a a decent a decent dog. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he's produced a big run in y'all. Uh, it's been a good it's been a good hunting ground for your trackers. Um, dear Jet Sydney, of course, hails from that part of the world. <laughs> I can't believe you knew that. I can't believe that. <laughs> Kenny, what else do we have to look forward to? Are you gonna you're gonna go all guns attack now at at Toaster and it'd be lovely to win a second one? Oh, it'd be great to look but I'll, I'll be coming to hopefully that the Irish Derby. I hope everything goes well and we, we can get um I think Shelburne will suit Duel and Duke to a tee. Uh, last year he was in the Irish Derby last year, but I just got him too quick. I only had him a week or so before the Irish Derby and I think he hadn't settled or and he went out in the first round of the Irish Derby but next year hopefully it's different yeah, indeed. By all accounts, you're going nowhere. You have fl- plenty of uh, you have plenty of great greyhounds to go to war with. So w- we look forward to seeing plenty more Kenny Glenn runners in both the Irish and English Derby, and who knows whatever classics come about. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Listen, lads, it's been a pleasure. Thanks very much. Best of luck in 2021. And as I've said to every one of these uh, owners that I've spoken to over the last few days. Um, Hopefully, we'll be talking to you again in 2021 about future, or this time next year, should I say, in early 2022, about the successes you've had in 2021. But for, for now, enjoy and savour uh, the, the brilliant 2020 that you both experienced on the track. Thank Thanks very much. Gentlemen, thanks very much indeed. Well, that's it for another look back at some of the winners of 2020. We're not finished with yet. We have more to come. Just keep abreast of all the action on Talking Dogs.